In this video, we're going to build a simple scraper API. I'm going to show you it using fast API, uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about why you may or may not want to do it this way. But I still think this is quite a cool project for those of you who are just getting used to building basic web applications. So these are the requirements that you're going to need to install. I'm using PyCharm and I have created a virtual environment and installed these through my requirements.txt file. You can just pip install them individually if you want to. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to create uh, an API application that returns JSON data. So when we put into the parameter URL, the Amazon ASIN identifier is going to return us that information. So let's import fast API to start with. So we do from fast API, import fast API. So you notice the capitals, then we'll import requests. We're going to need to use that to make the requests. And then from BS4, we're going to import beautiful soup as well. Now we need to instantiate our app. So I'm going to call this app is equal to the fast API. So now we have our instance of this application, which is going to work when we run it using UVCorn, which is the server. We're only going to have one route. We're not going to have any database. This is simply going to be you go to this endpoint and you give it this ASIN. So I'm going to say at app.get. We're going to put in slash and open the curly brackets ASIN like this. This means that we're expecting to see this query URL query parameter at the end of the URL slash like this, which we can then access. So now we'll say async def. I'm going to call this one get ASIN, I'll just call it get data. And now we need to say that we are expecting this ASIN information. And because we are using um, fast API, it's good to use the type hints that it expects. So now let's just return out uh, some JSON data. So it's going to be in the form of a Python dictionary, which uh, fast API will convert into JSON response for us. And we'll just say results. And for right now, we will just give it the ASIN that's going to get passed in like this. So let's run this. So we'll do uvcorn uh, main app and I'll do dash dash reload. Main is the file, app is the name of the fast API instance. Dash dash reload just means that whenever we save the file, it reloads the server. So we can see that this is working. So I'm gonna come back over to my browser and we'll go to 127 and we'll open up the URL and we'll see that we get detail not found. And that's because we are expecting to find something here. So let's put in our slash ASIN and we'll just call anything for now test. And you can see that we are getting this test back here. So whatever we put in this uh, after the URL is what's coming back here. Now what we can do with this is we can actually pass the information here into our uh, simple Amazon web scraping program to actually then execute when we hit this endpoint. So I'm going to code this out and I'm going to talk about what I'm doing all the way through and then I'll put some timestamps in because at the end we're going to talk about why you may not want to do this and another way that I think is probably better but more complicated. So let's go back to our code and we are going to want to do our session. So I'm just going to call this a session is equal to request.session. I'm just in the habit of using a session object now. You, you necessarily don't necessarily have to do one here. We are going to need some headers too. So I'm going to say session dot uh, headers. I cannot type headers dot update and we're going to pass in a dictionary of which what the first and main only thing we're going to use is the user agent like this and I'm going to go and grab a user agent from here. So I'm just going to go search my user agent. Copy the string and paste it in paste this text. There we go. Okay, now that's done. We can go ahead and make the request. So I'm going to say uh, response is equal to let's make this full screen again, session dot get and we want to give it the HTTPS uh, Amazon URL. So amazon.co.uk slash DP slash the ASIN that we have collected from our URL parameter. This is an F string. You notice the color changes when I put F in there. That means we're passing that variable into this URL. Now I am using the shortened Amazon URL. You'll notice if you go back to the actual product, it has the name here, but you can remove all of this and just keep the DP slash and then the ASIN and it gives you the page anyway. So let's just, uh, we can have that there like that.
So what we want to do is now is we need to pass the HTML information. So I'm going to create my soup object. I'm going to say soup is equal to beautiful soup response dot text. And we're going to be using the HTML dot parser. Uh, you can use any of the other ones, LMXL, etc, etc. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually construct the response that we want to make. So I'm just going to call it data. We're going to make this a dictionary because we're going to give this dictionary into our return here. So our, basically we're going to set up the async, we're going to return data. We're going to put information in here. But this is going to be a dictionary. The first piece of information I'm going to return is in fact the ASIN that we've passed in because we want to see that come back in the response so that we know exactly what we're looking at. The next is going to be the name and then the price. Now I'm going to leave these as strings but we need to now go ahead and get the actual selectors for this that we can scrape the data from. So I'm going to go to the view page, uh, the inspect tool here. Let's make this a bit bigger. This is, let's make this full screen whilst we're doing this and we'll come over and use the uh, inspect tool and there we go so we can see we have this span ID uh, and but I might use the h1 title I think that might be a better option so we're going to do soup dot select one I've talked about this before I much prefer to use CSS selectors with beautiful soup rather than the native ones it's my preference how you go about getting this data is entirely up to you so we want to say it was a I've forgotten already span no, an h1 tag with an id of title so h1 hashtag for the id and it was title and we want to just get the dot text from this i'm actually going to copy this now because we're going to be doing the same thing but for the price if i come back to this and hover over the price here you'll see that we have this span class of a off screen i've done this before and i tend to like to not be this ambiguous with this with the selectors but for this example i'm literally just i'm just going to do it like this and we'll say uh, span dot a off screen usually i prefer to have uh, a few more selectors in there so we'll say go to this one and then find this one underneath i just find it's a bit more robust in this case we're just going to leave it as it is so now that this is working what we've done is essentially when you hit this endpoint route and you pass in this ASIN parameter is going to run through this web scraper code and it's going to spit the results out at the end. So let's grab this and come back here and run this. And we can see there we go. Now it does indeed have. <clears throat> now I can notice there's some extra spaces here. So I'm going to do a dot strip there on the end of that one and just run it again and it'll just remove some of the extra around the code. So what's the main problem with this approach then? Well, as you notice, it was a bit slow because we are making a request every time you go to this endpoint. There's also the fact that what happens if something goes wrong? Well, we can kind of cope with that a little bit. So let's amend our code and we'll just say if response.statusCode is not equal to 200 which is what a good response we can actually return that out so we'll just return out error and we'll say bad and I need to make that a string bad status code and if I make this a f string we can also put in here response.status code like this so if it doesn't when it makes this request if it doesn't get a 200 response we're going to return this back instead so we can at least see something that's going on but what if we have issues passing the page well I would say you probably need to put a try and accept in here so what we'll do is we'll say we'll try to do this and return this let's move this up here uh, and it will accept on a key error which is usually the one you get you might find um, or list uh, index error we'll go on a key error for now we'll just return again a dictionary that says error and we'll put a string in here and we'll just say uh, unable to pass page. So we've made it a little bit more robust straight away. However, as, you, as we said, every time you go to this, this page, it's running all this code and it's going to be a bit slow. But it does work. Now, so where might you actually want to use this? Well, it's probably going to be only for personal use because it's not really ideal for anything else. But it is quite a fun project to do and you could... Uh, if you have more niche websites that you're looking to get data from, you could write your own API uh, to actually get that information 
and then you can call it by one endpoint to get everything that you need for that specific task or whatever. However, if the aim of your project is to hold that data, scrape it and do something with it, you're much better off doing it in a different way, which of course is gonna be more work, but it's gonna be better in the end. What I would do is I would separate it out so I'd have my scraper separate to my API, my database, and I would have uh, endpoints that I could use to post data to. So we would set up a app.post as opposed to .get, and it would accept data into its database that we could post to. So we could run this code essentially externally to our application and just push the data that we scrape into it and then we would have a database available that we are updating constantly or how often you want to that you could then create endpoints to receive with a timestamp a date tag saying last updated on this day that is obviously a lot more work but that's how i would go about it and if you're interested in seeing something like that let me know because i will uh, try to get a a decent sort of project out for you around that sort of thing if you find that interesting but this one definitely give it a go try and make it for different websites make it a bit more useful for you uh, and get used to working and creating your own back-end apis if you've enjoyed this and you want to know how to get this data a bit better you're going to want to watch this video right here where i go through all my amazon web scraping techniques